because I did a lot of, um, you know, body lotions and stuff in the nude for beauty. On the back of my book, I had some nudes, and they said, we'll use you for something else. So that's how I got this part as a nude <laughs> actress. <laughs> so did you know the full extent of the scene before you kind of signed on? I had absolutely, well, no, I knew I was going to do nude, you know, which was fine because I was used to it. As I said, you know, I did a lot of beauty stuff. So, um, but um, the funny thing is I hadn't got one clue what it was about. You know, I just about knew who Jack Nicholson was, <laughs> but I didn't really know Sandy Kubrick or anybody. So it was pretty new to me. And I did the whole thing without knowing what it was about. And I used to say, what is this? Can I see a script? They said, you don't need a script. You are a ghost. Just, just be a ghost, you know? <laughs> so that was OK. <laughs> OK, so um, did you think, honestly, did, that we'd still be talking about that scene as being one of the scariest moments in cinematic history for decades? And do you have people actually, I mean, okay, and this is gonna go eventually to all of you, but I'm gonna start with Leah. What is the weirdest fan experience you've ever had regarding something you've done for a movie that, that people just love? The weirdest fan experience? Someone, someone came up to you on the street or, you know. I'm afraid not, not really. <laughs> they haven't. I mean, you know, they write to me on Facebook and they, they admire me and what have you, and I say, oh my God, this is, I'm ancient, you know, I think, oh my God, they think I still look like this. <laughs> I say, be careful because I have aged a lot, you know, but not really anything weird at all. No, no weird fine experiences whatsoever. What are you? Um, no, I've just, I've, I've been in awe of how wonderful everybody has been. And so they're just excited about Seeing, it was a very small moment in the film, and uh, I'm just really I'm proud of it, and I'm proud that, you know, to say that I was part of it. But it, everybody has been lovely. I've, I've never. So many people have been so nice. Like that's the biggest thing. Like every time I go to one of these, I, I just started going a while ago, but it's just such a, like I'm overwhelmed with how, well, with how pleasant everybody is and how welcoming and wonderful. Like I really have not had anybody be or weird or scary, so in a bad way. Give it a chance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I would have to agree with Christy that horror fans are such warm and caring and kind people. Like, you might dress up and look like a total crazy person. I'm like, oh my God, I'm terrified of you. And then, you know, you take the mask off and just shoot the shit in the elevator while you're riding up to your room. And I'm like, these people are so awesome. So thank you guys, thank you. Um, the weirdest thing for me, I think, is that there's at least four or five people in the world that have my face tattooed on them. <laughs> and I'm like, that is crazy. One of, there's a guy in Germany, and I go to the same convention in Germany every fall, I've gone for like six years, um, the weekend of hell, if you guys feel like venturing out of the country for an experience, you could check that one out, it's pretty interesting. Um, there's a guy who always comes to that every year, and he has me tattooed on his leg. He has a lot of other like horror actors tattooed on different parts of his body, but I took up his like left thigh, which I thought was like a really nice place, a place of honor. Um, and then after he had the tattoo done, I came back and he had he was like, "Can you autograph it below with this sharpie?" And I'm gonna go get your autograph tattooed now. <laughs> yeah. So that was, I mean, it's weird, but also really awesome, you know? So thank God for our fans, man. They give us this career. So we, we are eternally grateful. I'm sure I can speak for you guys too. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I one thing I did, well, it was really weird. I did have a couple letters from some people in prison, but they were still nice. <laughs> so that was about it. <laughs> did you ride back? I did not. <laughs> because I was just, I don't know. It, I, it was a few years ago, but I thought, I don't know, should I write back? <laughs> uh, Sarah, this one's for you. Um, Doing I Spit on Your Grave, you know, that's an iconic film in the horror business. I mean, that film helped inspire other films. When you were doing your character development for that movie, I mean, emotionally, how did that affect you trying to create such a character? Thank you for that question, that's really cool. Um, 
<clears throat> as an actor, your process varies by the project that you take. And it has a lot to do with how much you personally identify with a character. So if you, you know, have to play, I, I don't know, like an alien, like seductress, it, it's gonna take a lot of work, because <laughs> you're not that, you know? Um, but in the case of Jennifer Hills, I really had a lot in common with this person. You know, this is a young woman who's a creative, who, you know, has put her heart and soul into trying to create things for people's enjoyment. I mean, a hello, I know what that is. <laughs> um, and then who happens to go through this terrible experience. And as an actor, um, really for me, all I had to do was react. And, um, you know, anyone who would go through something like that in real life would um, experience the same emotions of fear and pain and devastation and anger and retribution that I went through. So really, you know, all I had to do was just really truly believe that this was happening to me. Um, and that made it easy. Added to um, that was the incredible gift that I was given by our director that we were able to film chronologically. So then I had all of that experience getting attacked to base my revenge portion on. And it made it very easy. Most movies aren't filmed that way, I'm sure you know. Um, kind of the, the order in which they're filmed is dictated more by like the schedule of which location is available on which week and how much is that gonna cost. Um, so we were really lucky to be able to do, especially I was able to, um, was lucky to be able to do that because obviously there's a very, there's a very obvious cause and effect in this film. Okay, um, what do you think of Kane Hunter? I mean, Kane's here, <laughs> so I, I'm sure you had some, uh, uh, some scenes to work with in that film. Uh, do you still keep in touch? Do you still talk? How is working with Kane Hunter? Um, well, Kane is a character in real life as well. I'm sure all of you that met him know that. <laughs> um, he, was, he was lovely on set. Uh, we choreographed everything, we discussed everything. He was always very kind, um, but just before we were about to shoot, we, you know, he said, I need to prepare and I need to separate us and I can't talk to you. And there was like kind of a strange energy that came over him that kind of creeped me out, which is great. And, um, and you know, so, we occasionally, you know, like we see play, you know, each other here, and he's always a, a wonderful guy. We don't really keep in touch in the sense that we're emailing all the time, but uh, you know, he's he's a a lovely man, and and I've had I had a great time working with him, and um, he made it because I'd never been killed before. Uh, he made it as real as possible, but with also being very concerned about making sure not to hurt me and you know, how we were gonna do it, and I, you know, so we, we just went through all of that and discussed it and, and did it piece by piece by piece, and I think it turned out really well. Can you tell us a little bit more about that death scene? I mean, it's, it's an interesting uh, yeah. death in itself, so. <laughs> well, the, the great thing was is a week before, there was five days, five or six days that we did all of the prosthetic work, so we had, they had to do a full, head cast, so it, it was like I was in a sensory dep deprivation chamber, that was about 20 to 30 minutes, and then they did a full body cast as well. They did, um, they checked on, they matched the color of my skin, they used real human hair, eyelashes, this everything to make us look identical. So there was 10 bodies lined up, 10 heads lined up, just sitting there all wearing the same outfit, which was really strange, and we're all like perfectly proportioned. Uh, so we did all of that. Um, the makeup um, artist, which also special effects, uh, was the same who worked for The Fly, who won an Academy Award. So he was amazing. He did all the casting of my face, and they made prosthetic pieces of my eyes. Uh, we worked through all of that. We shot it in pieces. I did the stunt where I jumped off of a springboard and slammed into the window over and over again and um, bruised myself from knee up to hip, which I didn't feel at the time because my ad adrenaline was going and uh, went back to the, my trailer and I was like, oh, I did some damage to my legs. But uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was scary as well. Like uh, you kind of get, your adrenaline gets going, you get caught up into it. And um, the, 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 
thing with my face. We shot it in an aquarium, so I went up on a stepladder and I had to scream going in, hold my face still. They had to do a series of shots to do the CGI. They put a mask on me. So there was a whole bunch of things for, I don't know how long it was, what, a minute and a half or two minutes. It took, I think, up to two weeks to shoot it, so. 